Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Hell You Say. This is episode 24 of the show. Uh, as It's lasted about 22 episodes longer than people thought it would, so for all you people that didn't believe in this show, <laughs> there. Anyway, I have a real treat for you tonight. I'm, I'm very, very excited about talking to this band. Love the name. It's one of my favorites. I'm definitely going to be asking them how they came up with this name, but it's splattered throat, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I have I have to ask, and, and now you'll, you'll know what this question is. Hmm, I wonder how they know that. Splattered Throat. How did you come up with the name Splattered Throat for the band? Splattered Throat was born because of lyrics. The lyrics <laughs> that the pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I was writing lyrics. Would have been technically the first song I, as a drummer, would have written mm -hmm. and hummed a few of the riffs to my to Rob at the time and you know we definitely expanded and that definitely splattered throat lyrics um nice that well the lyrics went and and that was one of the prospects of, of band names that were up there and it was just the coolest one it was sort of an attention getter mm -hmm. uh something hopefully you don't forget yeah, exactly. Uh, you want to get the X-rated version of it. This was Google it first. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yes, it was going to go there. And I said, all right, so that can be like right below or, or above us or something like that. Right. Then you hit the Facebook page. If there's any splattered throat, no, there wasn't. So it's like, oh, this is perfect. You know, I did the band name dot com, right? Made a fee, whatever. And uh, so now we're up there with you know some of the death thrash and porn. Nice. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. You know, de you know, death thrash and porn. Like they go together like sunshine and a lovely day. You know, it's like you know, it's perfect. You know, so. But uh, yeah, I love the name splattered throat. I think that's terrific. It just kind of grabs you. And it uh, definitely tells you it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to be covering Billy Eilish songs or anything with that name. So it's like very good, you know. So I like that. I like that. Well, yeah, I, I had to find that out. But now I got to, you know, I, I want everybody to, uh, I was rude. I asked that question first and it was rude of me, but I'm rude anyway. But uh, would you please, everybody, introduce yourselves to the world. So, and all. but now that, now that I'm trying not to be rude, it's a new thing I'm working on. So tell me who you are. Well, you're a good rude answer. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Ken B. Splatter, and I'm the drummer. Mm -hmm. Robbie Splatter, rhythm guitar. Rose, lead guitar. Dean, bass, and back and forth. I'm Sheila, the vocalist. There you go. The, the new vocalist. Yes, yes. Uh, I have to admit, uh, the first time I saw you and you opened your mouth, I was not expecting what I heard. I was like... Holy shit! Listen to this. It was fantastic. I love. I love hearing that. Um, we were talking earlier, of course, uh, of, of my uh, my love of the fact that you're the first woman to to be on the show in the metal industry that I've in been, that had the pleasure to interview. So history being made on this historic episode. And all. but you know when you grab that mic and just and I'm like. How the hell? What the hell? That that's not wow. Okay, yeah. So I was like, really, really surprised. Now, uh, have have you always sung like that, Sheila? What was that? Have you always sung like that? Have you always had that that guttural sound? No, actually, um, with my other band, I was doing vocals one day, and Nate comes with some really heavy riffs and. Um, he was playing something. I was like, I don't know how to sing to that. And so um, the drummer at the time was says to me, well, if you can't sing it, why are you here? So oh. I decided that I didn't like that. So I went <laughs> home and I cooked dinner and I angrily looked up videos and I taught myself how to do gutter rolls. <laughs> wow. Nice. I like that. I like that. How dare they tell you you can't do something? That, that That's just rude. Oh, so rude. Unbelievable. So I, 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 ha I have to ask you all, uh, uh, what got you into music? What what turned you got you to go into this direction? Well, I personally, I usually will always have to mention Kiss when some sort of question is asked about my youth growing up, my bringing into the metal hood. Mm -hmm. It was Kiss's fault. I just How? blame him because Peter Chris was my favorite drummer. Nice. Of course, he always had a big set. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People say I got a big set, but maybe (laughs) compared to Peter. But um, then H really was my. Oh. Are you there? It just cut out. Uh, you're you're back on. If you want to go back and talk about, you're talking about Ace Freely. Oh yeah, just my favorites being Peter Crisp was my favorite drummer. Ace mm-hmm. Freely was my favorite guitarist, and they would come same band. But you know, back in the '70s, growing up, and me being about eight to ten years old at that time, mm-hmm. and the fire and the blood and and the smoke with the guitar. I mean, everybody had their little theatrical stage. Things mm-hmm. that really stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And then I think from there it went harder to harder. You know, I got from there to Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. Nice. You know, in there. Um, and of course, harder went into Pantera mm-hmm. and then like God. And so it just kind of stayed with me, but more aggressive each genre. And it broke into so many genres to me. Metal is metal, and mm-hmm. uh, they're all good. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, please, uh, the rest of the of the band. Please let me know what what got you doing this. Oh, I mean, for me, I'm kind of a younger cat, so I had the internet made it kind of easy for me to find underground stuff, old mm-hmm. like old school trash, death metal, black metal, and yeah, it's kind of what with that instead of like the more popular stuff, you know. Nice, nice. Rob, Robbie's avoiding this question. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I don't know. I've just always been in music from really young age. Like, I mean, super young, like five years old, trying mm-hmm. to do it at my parents' turntable and stuff. And uh, it's just, yeah, like these guys said, natural progression was the heavier thing I found. I wanted to go to the next thing, the next thing. You know? mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just kind of naturally ended up here. Nice, and, nice. And the gentleman all the way to the right who's trying to avoid being interviewed. You're not getting away with that. <laughs> You're not going to get out of it that easy, my friend. Um, I've been into everything from Kiss and Cheap Trick. Oh, nice. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm having stuff like um, Cut This, Obituary, Death. <laughs> nice. And there you go. Kiss. Nice. Know, it's, it's always been into heavy music. Nice. Good, good. Sheila, got to ask you, you're not going to dodge this question either, my dear. I know, you know, when I was a kid, my dad listened to things like Steppenwolf and, mm. you know, things that I just kind of grew up listening to that music. And then um, just like the older I get, the heavier the music is that I like. And um, so a few years ago, I joined a band with these guys and uh, it just kind of has progressed since then. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, i'm just amazed that she's a real girl (laughs) i love it i love it i i i I love all your answers i i I love because it's it's right up my alley because i'm i'm right there with you when when i was growing up i was a huge kiss fan i had all four walls covered in posters and you know and my parents were driven nuts by me and and I always had that that uh, that the kind of that thing for the theatrical, the the flair of, of theatrics. I I, always, I grew up watching, you know, Alice Cooper and Kiss and Sex Pistols, uh, Ramones and things like that. And then grew as I got older, uh, kind of just like Ken, you know, I was the Judas Priest and and Iron Maiden, and then and somewhere along the line I turned weird and, and kept up with the theatrics. But now I like bands like 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 you know like Guar. I love Guar, and you know. Yeah. I was I, I, dogs on my way here, actually. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, one of my all-time favorite bands. I've seen them a ton of times and all. But it's funny when I say that because every band has like the same reaction you all did. It's like, yeah, Guar, uh huh, yeah, right. You know, I just, lo- I love bands like that, and and, and that's why I liked. Uh, oh, well, actually, I loved uh, your your last uh, set of pictures that you all did out in the graveyard. I thought was really, really cool. Whose idea was that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Ken, I have um, some blood. Do you want me to bring some blood? And he was like, we love blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you want to work to ACDC. If you want blood, we've got it, you know? So good, you know? You would have to be over 40 to get it. I don't know how much of that we 
<laughs> yes, but there are, you can Google, there are ghost stories mm -hmm. uh, at this particular place. Oh, okay. We, um, oh, how would you say it? I guess I could say was recreating something mm -hmm. that was part of my youth that maybe I never seen, but was part of a ghost story. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The blood is always good, like she said, and I don't think of anything. Robbie said it the best when he said that was the damn best photo fucking shoot for a nice. man ever. <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Like, <laughs> there you go. Being a bar, the moment I like saw that we had fake blood and me being the bar fan, I'm like, well, y'all fucked up by letting me play a fish. There you so go. I and like have a picture of me spitting blood out, but it was so gross I ended up like puking. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I know. But if you see, if you see the out picture, of one. yeah, the picture of me just like looking down on the ground, that's me legitimately puking out fake blood. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, always like puke chunks in the fake blood. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna put this blood in my mouth and I'm just gonna like act like I'm throwing it up on you. I'm like, okay. So I'm like ready for Nate to puke and then Nate starts puking for real. I'm like, oh. and so you'll see there's a picture where I'm in this white gown with blood on me and I'm like, are you okay, buddy? I'm like, up on the ground and I'm like, oh, are you all right? So there's a, and it's like my favorite picture actually from the entire four thing. Four times it's like, this, by the way. Four <laughs> times I, I Four. So, 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 in the fucking blood on the ground. Wow. So, so you batted a thousand and went four for four? <laughs> went for it, and none of them even turned out good. So. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite picture. From, it's like when you're, when you're, it looks to me, it's like when your friend is throwing, like, you can be brutal as hell, but when your friend's in trouble, you're like, are you okay? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Who said there's no sacrifices in rock and roll? All right, I refuse to believe that, you know? So. I have to thank Mother Nature for that day because the overcast is actually perfect. And I know the setting, and if it is cloudy or rainy, it's the best time to be there for that particular time. That, that definitely helps that set the mood for it. It was a very dreary look to the look, to the you know, the pictures. So and I'm like, perfect. That That's terrific. Very good effort. Uh, um, I figured you guys so just planned. Uh, compliment to Mother Nature as well. There you go. There you go. I figured you guys just planned it and went, all right, hey, cloudy day. Let's go do this thing. All right. So uh, uh, are, are, I, I don't ask this of, of many bands, but when they bring it up, I do. Do you have a belief in the paranormal? Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I do. Up. Up. I know you paranormal. Oh, okay. Oh. was an added thing. Now, that could have been technically, I had an ex wife that had claimed to have seen her on the day I was there as a teenager. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. As a teenager, the history goes back that we did hear Satanists went out there. And we were a little more nervous of that to some extent, but curious. So sure. we, there was a bunker out there across mm -hmm. from the, the cemetery where we was, like mm -hmm. 50 yards, 100 yards. And uh, there was a Satanic bunker, and I went in there as a teen. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know, okay, what is it like in here? What is this? And then I go in there, and there's all the satanic graffiti in there, and my oh. hair is up on my arm. I was about 19, probably, at the time, maybe even 17. Okay. I was a teenager still. Right. Uh, my ex-wife, at that time, she was younger. She says, there's some lady up there on white on the summit watching us. I never seen her, but she scared her, and she's like, we got to get out of here. So wow. I left, and then, uh, you know, since then, 30 years has gone by that they have buried that. Oh, and wow. How'd they really? People yeah. won't know unless you're over 40. Oh, yeah. Anyway, some of the history. Wow. Uh, okay. 
I thought we would be pissing off the true spirit in this little photo session if there is a paranormal we we might have pissed them off either that or yeah either that or they appreciate it yeah that might be tmi as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do, yeah you know doing that kind of photo shoot too you probably pleased the spirits they were probably very happy to have you there so you know, Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if 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 they were pissed off, screw them. Okay. Anyway, you know, so that that's how I feel. So, um, all right. Well, so uh, you know, you guys have had uh, uh, two singles uh, in 2018: "Invert the Skin," "Prelude to Death." Both great tunes. Loved them all. Uh, I moved on to "Tiny Pieces," the album in 2019. Uh, I haven't said this about every every band, so. This is I, my my best honor I can give that if it really means anything. There's not a bad song on that whole friggin' album. I was I was impressed. I mean, it's it is terrific. Uh, you know, you know, not I'm not cutting on people, and I'm just, I'm just brutally honest about things. But this is one of those albums where, you know, somebody asked, well, if if you were you know if you were stuck in an island, you can only take albums with you that were. That were 10 out of 10 you know they were perfect albums which ones would you take i gotta admit tiny pieces would be one of my cds to take with me uh, i you know uh, i i just i just think it, it was amazing how, uh, how long did it take you guys to make that that album to record it yes uh yeah the whole process oh well many years to write it many years um, oh yeah some of the songs were um older songs that we had in another band me and ken were in oh uh -huh. and then, uh, all the way from 2013 when we started up to then you know that was the process mm -hmm. and then, uh, we recorded it in what was it about three days a week something like that nice yeah nice maybe a week with going back with yeah, people with scheduled and, and stuff. stuff like that but mm -hmm. i mean we, we had one and two takes. We weren't there to spend tons and tons of money. But right. we also kind of knew the material pretty good. Rob and I, we played together a lot of years. Well, we, we've been in a recording studio before, but we, we did get our shit together a little bit sometimes. And sometimes under pressure, you get your shit together, too. Or, right. or you fail one of the two, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we all like the yes or now to some now. We'll give compliments there. A, a lot of it on YouTube there that was from Tiny Pieces was Dan Nelson doing the vocals. So uh, horns up to him for, for the vocals on those. Cool. And uh, then we went with a second singer. Well, we had a second, uh, John, and he'd done some harsh, uh, the guttural kind of thing, not mm -hmm. as understandable, more cannibal corpse. Um, okay. And... Now we're on to our third vocalist after, and, and it's a big change, and I love it because horns up to the women of metal. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll clap to that. Uh, the thing there, some of the members here are Serpent Owl Rituals, and there's Splattered Throat members now, and um, she's got two great bands now. There you go. Band. Nice. One little... Uh, more harmonic, as you would say. Melodic. Uh, melodic. She does more opera. Opera yeah. and clean vocals um, in that one more, um, and things like that. And then this one, I just get to be brutal as fuck. Right. So. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Not just brutal, but brutal as fuck. I like that. So it's that like, extra brutal. <laughs> now, now, uh, Sheila, I got to ask you on that question. Do Do you prefer singing the operatic way, or do you like those guttural, that that guttural type? I like it all. Um, I really do. When it comes to the gutturals, though, I think as a female doing it, um, mm -hmm. it feels empowering. I think it's something that not a lot of women do. And I think it's like a, you know, I have a few people that, um, Jillian Povey, she was in a band called Boudica, mm -hmm. um, a like, Portland-based band. And I used to listen to her and I met her and she was just this tiny, like five foot one woman. And she was petite and she had this sweet little voice and I talked to her and you know, we talked about potty training animals and stuff and then all of a sudden she's 
on stage and she is just so deep and her vocals are so fucking brutal and i was like holy crap wow i want to be this someday you know there you go mm -hmm. and like, she was just like i mean there's not a lot of women that do it and it's just so empowering to get up there and just be able to scream and like and these guys you know i uh splattered throat i learned to turn tiny pieces one thing for me like you were saying you know i was a fan beforehand so it was an easier transition because i listened to music so mm -hmm. i had heard it i listened to it i played it i came to help with a party um for halloween and um i came here knowing one song and i went home and they'd give me four more to learn <laughs> 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 so um, did that, and so I learned those, and we got that party, and I sang them, and then we did another one here, uh, like a month ago, and um, they uh, invited me to join, and uh, I, I love it. Um, it's been great. Um, yeah, I feel like I have had a crown placed on my head. <laughs> that's, that's <it>. <laughs> 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 And I'll be the first to say I know she did. She worked her ass off. Yeah. Great. Honestly, my hesitation was we were getting too many Serpent Hour ritual members in this band. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? If you looked at the five of us and you put how many years of experience music, what would we come up with for a number? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> 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 I was like so, so really, it doesn't matter, but they are different bands right and yeah. to be extinguished as different bands mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i have three of their members in this one now. wow yeah. it's, it's it was meant to be on our lead he's fucking badass i have to say it there you go badass. i'm okay so ah Bye. now you're okay. You're badass to me, my friend. Anybody that throws up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the CD, I was not on that album. And then after that was Austin that did that. So then I'll leave you on that. Give him a shout out, somebody. There you go. And, and by the way, young man, don't sell yourself short. Anybody that throws up four times, they're all right in my book. All right? So, all right. yeah. So, yeah. Hor horns. Metal horns, do you? <laughs> <laughs> now now I, I i have to ask this question I'm, I'm curious to hear what your answer is ever since i've started doing this show um i'm, I'm hitting idaho a lot uh, and i and i really did not expect that i have to admit that i expect it to be california or new york or you know somebody like that but boise idaho i'm like really it, is has there always been this big metal community in Boise or am I just having luck with Boise? Growing more and more. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of people moving out here. Yeah, I mean, it's it took kind of a big hit there um, in the 90s. But it was big in like the, the 80s when, it, you know, when metal was just starting to come around everywhere. Mm -hmm. It kind of fell off for a while and then in the in the late 90s it started to come back, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, in the last 10 or so years it's been pretty strong. That yeah, it's been amazing what I've seen out there. I mean, it's pretty major, really. I I've interviewed more people uh, from the Idaho area of the country than I have for the the, the two big states. Uh, and I was just like, I had to ask because it's like I just did not expect that, and it's it's wonderful to find out. You know, it's like I could say, well, who are the top three places? Okay, L.A., New York, and Boise, and then you can have the people going, you know. Boise, what? Really? You know, so yeah, just did not expect that. Um, are it's there? Kind of like times we, can get, we get skipped a lot for the bigger major shows that run through. Oh, do you? We end up having to go to Salt Lake City or going to Portland to to watch some of the major bands that roll through. So it, for us, it, that's a little bit more difficult. It creates a lot more yeah. traveling. It's kind of a double-edged sword, though, because at the same time, there's also that connection. So you do get, like, fans from Portland, Seattle, Salt yeah. Lake. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, now, people that come down and visit there. I mean, just people that come, like, I think the Love Like Creation, when they play here, mm -hmm. people like come from Portland to see them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Um, how, how long a trip is that? I'm, I'm not too familiar with Idaho. Uh, like, how, how long is the trip set to go see, the, like, Portland? Yeah, like I think it's like, I it's like, like seven. No, I think it's more like five. No. About, about 
I didn't mean to start anything, everybody. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you go. <laughs> I, I had to ask because I'm just, you know, it, it just sounded far to me. And it's like, well, I love the fact that people, there's still people out there willing to drive five, six, seven hours to go see a band play. It's like, well, that's great to hear. I, I you know, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, see where I'm at. We're, see, we're spoiled. We're really so, spoiled here. Beautiful, full of people, and they're like, fam, like this. It's uh, the time it takes to get from here to anywhere is fucking eternity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had to ask us. Some uh, Idaho's metal. I also do Idaho's metal family. So that's a, a local community page. There's no fam, but I'm going to promote myself on that one too. Good. Uh, you should. You don't really get fam there unless it's going to come in the answers and i monitor that but for the most part the good close look at shows that are coming through idaho it's also a lot of local bands i've interviewed kind of similar to yours but different uh and it's good that everybody's out there doing support when mm -hmm. you said you were on the east coast i lit up to that because it's like oh wow that's nice to know mm -hmm. that you've been heard out there or you know who we are so uh right little idaho didn't really get such much all the time recognition now, yeah, uh, Boise area, they say, is the leading top of the nation, growing city. Wow. So if that many people, I imagine you're going to get a handful of musicians as well and new bands coming through. So, all of those guys are playing too. Technology. Is it? I, yeah, I really got like high school, like 18, 19. So it's like really? Yeah. Oh, that's it. popping up, like 17, 18. Um, and they, we've got a lot of new bands coming out, um, too. There's Barn that's been pretty new around here in Brutalism. Uh, we have friends in that band. And, I mean, they're just killing it. They're they're killing it. And nice. so um, the scene is just really thriving right now, and it's coming alive. So. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. It's it's rock and roll never dies. I I have to admit where I live, we're like the snots of of the country because we think we're better than everybody else. Because where I live, in a five hour difference, I can I can see a band in uh, New York, Boston, Cleveland, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington, Norfolk, Virginia, in five hours. So I can see anybody. In fact, one year that's what we did. We followed Guar all up and down the East Coast. And, and you know, so well, I'll talk about ruined clothes. Oh dear God in heaven! I had to, like buy a whole new wardrobe after I was done with that tour. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, 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 any plans for a, a new album? Anything in the works right now that we should know about? It's complicated, but uh, oh. we want to write and do more. But at the same time, we want to break Sheila in and get her really good and solid. Mm -hmm. Like we mentioned before. Uh, the YouTube versions are older members. We got new lead guitars. Sometimes we talk about re recording some of the ones that we do already have out. But oh, okay. Um, and even Dean's yeah, Dean uh, as well. new on the bass well, for uh, um, the tunes you're seeing your yeah. most of on there. Now, some of them are just band practice and things too. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, the album itself. So. It's hard to say if we're gonna. We'll probably want to re-record maybe a handful that are already there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are looking to do new stuff as well with brand new lyrics coming from her. Mm -hmm. um, nice. If she wants to do full lyrics. That's on her. If she wants to send a clipboard around like in the old school, we would always write a couple of lines and kind of everybody throws a little two cents. There you go. There you go. Nice, so, nice. We kind of envision things uh, a little of both. Okay. Um, we want to modify. It'd be nice to bring some theatrics into our stage shows and even um, oh, things, God, you make things like, like you, we haven't talked about. <laughs> uh, yeah. just, just have, just have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just have Sheila, uh, you know, do blood. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I say just have Sheila go up there and drink blood and, and watch how you don't throw up when you drink blood, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> well, there is a lot of cannibalism on Chinese There you go. Nice. There you go. Well, uh, you know, 
like you know, like I said, you, you can't be over theatrical. I think it's it's it's. I like the bands that give that theatrical yeah, kind of, there, you know, yeah, you yeah. You know, any band can get up there and stand and just play, but you know, when people are coming to see you, you ought to give them just a little bit more. And that's how I've always been, and 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 things like that. So I mean, I don't think you should go up there and blow yourself up on stage or anything like that, but just a little something, you know. But. Uh, yeah, you know, well, I, 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 blowing yourself up on stage would catch my interest. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would talk about that. For there we go. While. I could, <laughs> if if you guys would let me do the honor, I'll set myself on fire on stage for you guys. How's that? Can I do that? Okay. Oh, no, we don't encourage any. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be like the. I, I want to be the honorary member of Splatter oh, Throw. Thank you. And, oh, there we go. There we go. I haven't made a mosh pit I didn't like, and both my knees are still telling me that because I'm an old fart now. Thanks for all that mosh pitting you did, you stupid son of a bitch. Yeah, so. But that. Pit Dick song. We had a, a song called Pit Dick, and it was about the, the, the dick in the pit. Yeah. Wow. And wow. We're out there. Always, uh, um, we always want to respect and, you know, protect your women and that. And that's pit. exactly right. Yeah. Yep. And there was some lyrics that were so harsh we couldn't understand them all. They weren't written. She would name modify them. There you go. Trying to re-resurrect. Nice. I like them. Yeah, <laughs> it becomes a new version. That's you know, it's all good. So. Well, believe it or not, uh, it's just about time to wrap this up. Uh, this has gone really, really well, and I've been very, very interested in listening to all this. It's that, that, that half hour is zipped right on by. Uh, do you all have anybody you want to thank before we wrap this up? No? Nah. Well, I thank I, you and, and hey. you know, everything you're doing from so far away, you know, coast to coast thank you. over here. Thank coast you. Coast to coast to We're one state away from the Pacific side, so. There you go. Uh, Anyway, do look us up. We have Facebook, YouTube, and all over. Like, hey, you do, go Google. You might get a little braver. It might get a little broader. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and all that uh, I will be putting on, on the ending credits of, of the show uh, when I, I put... I, check that out. There's a lot of pictures right there. It's brand new, so use all the followers, please. There you go. And I will... Always do my best to try and send people your way. Um, once they hear tiny pieces, especially when they want to have full album, I don't think you're going to have much problem getting a lot of subscribers there. So because we're gonna we're gonna push the shit out of that album. Because damn, that's a good album. I hate blowing smoke up your all's asses, but damn, that's a good album. I love that damn thing. But uh, but yeah, but uh, that's why I started this. Is I I, I want to help bands that that you know I, there's so much talent out there and no one's doing anything to really bring this talent up into people's you know notices and that's why i wanted to do this and, and also because uh, uh, now i'm too old to do anything so this is the best of rock and roll that i could do because if i get up there on the stage i'm going to break a leg or an arm or something it's like you know you will you old bastard get off stage i'm like okay sorry everybody you know so but uh anyway I want to thank all of you for, for taking time out and doing this with me. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, everybody, watch this. Yep, thank you. Yep, thank you all. And everybody that watches, check them out. Splattered Throat, they've got great stuff. Check them out. Uh, YouTube, Apple, we were just talking, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, they're there. So go out and buy your stuff and become a subscriber to them because they're worth it. They're worthy, okay? They're not like me where I'm not worthy. I, I'm not worthy. You know, These guys and gal, they're worthy. So thanks again, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Thanks again for taking time out for doing this. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, everybody, for watching this. And thanks for putting up with my ugly face for another week. How you keep coming back, I have no idea. But anyway, thanks for coming back. Peace and love to everyone. And as the demon gargoyle comes out of my body to end every show the way we end the show, here we go, everybody. Bye now.